1941, George Genie invented the Ondioline. This was an early electronic music instrument that used vacuum tubes in a design centering what he called the cathodic coupled transposing oscillator. The oscillator was used in conjunction with a set of filters and a novel keyboard that allowed for both vibrato with sideways finger movement and staccato with a special strip. The ondioline could create a very wide range of sounds. Some were really good emulations of strings and winds and others were purely electronic in nature. This was arguably the most advanced electronic instrument of its day in terms of the range of timbres and waveforms it could create. Hakan Audio's Christoph Duquesne studied the architecture of the sound synthesis model used in the Andioline and went to Lippold Hakan and the two with Ed Egan worked out a digital model of this oscillator that includes a number of enhancements over the original design. And what resulted is the Egan Matrix Genie Oscillator. Let's take a look at the Genie Oscillator as implemented in the Egan Matrix. Now remember, this is not an ondioline. It's a reimagining and extension of the primary sound generation technique used by the ondioline. At its core, the Genie Oscillator is a hard synced oscillator to a master oscillator you define in the Egan Matrix, not unlike some synths that have two oscillators, one of which synchronizes its phase and frequency to its master. But the Genie Oscillator has some unique functions and sonic capabilities we'll discuss. I'll start by using a diagram that Lippo uses in his electronic music synthesis course at the University of Illinois, which he kindly said I could use here. So what is the Genie Oscillator doing? Well, first, you have to define a master oscillator. The Genie Oscillator is a synced oscillator to a master. If you just define the Genie Oscillator by itself in the Egan Matrix, it will produce no sound. And that'll be the leftmost oscillator to the Genie Oscillator you define in your matrix. So the DSF Oscillator basically uses a phase accumulator. It creates a phase that's indicated by this little ramp here, though it's not really a sawtooth ramp. This is really meant to be a motion to one and back, basically a 360 degree phase motion. And that phase information is fed into the waveform creation component, discrete summation formula that's used to create the waveforms. DFS oscillators do not use lookup tables. They use a math function that is, for all intents and purposes, the sum of exponentially decreasing harmonic amplitudes of sine waves. The DSF oscillator is a sum of exponentials. That really doesn't matter for our discussion here. What matters is the end result is a band-limited wave output. And the harmonics of that wave are defined by the S function, the shape parameter or spectral balance parameter we all use when we create an oscillator in the Egan matrix. So we have this oscillator, and now we define a genie oscillator to the right of it. Now the genie oscillator takes the phase of the master oscillator and uses that to feed phase information to its own DSF component. With the phase, it also inherits the frequency of the master. So the genie oscillator takes the phase and frequency information of the master oscillator, and then you specify a frequency multiplier to create a genie resonance. This multiplier is normally four or greater, but it can be less, as we'll see. Once you've defined this genie resonance, then you'll specify spectral balance just the same way you did in the master oscillator. You don't inherit the waveform data from the master oscillator. You inherit the phase and frequency information. Now, in addition to that, a number of predefined shapes can be selected to apply an amplitude decay contour, basically a phase inversion. This does two basic things. It inverts the phase to apply this amplitude decay. So for example, if you create a waveform with some fractional period, which you really don't want to do, by the end of the waveform, the amplitude will have gone to zero. So it doesn't really matter if your waveform has that fractional period defined. The other thing it does is it affects the timbre of the sound in various ways, as we'll see. Now you'll also specify a bandwidth multiplier that affects this contour decay. This is a real value greater than or equal to 1 most of the time. If it's 1, that specifies normal bandwidth. Values greater than 1 increase the bandwidth accelerating the Jenny oscillator's resonance decay rate. This has no effect when it's set to 0. So if bx equals 1, the Jenny computes 1 minus the master phase 
making a ramp function that decays over one master oscillator period. And Pulse multiplies the Jenny Zone output by that, making a non-band limited linear ramp decay on the resonance. The resonance completely decays within one period of the master, always. If Bx is greater than one, then the decay is even faster than one period. Faster decays make for a wider bandwidth effect. Now you can use bandwidth multiplier values between 0 and 1, but in that case, you'll be adding a sinusoid resonance that does not decay within one fundamental period. This can add discontinuities. In addition to the base phase inversion that's used in the original oscillator, Lippold adds a number of other shapes that can affect the sound in different ways that we'll talk about. You also have the option of not applying any shape at all. The end result is this oscillator can be output to the master section either by itself or along with the master oscillator to create a wide variety of waveforms and timbres. Now if you want, you can define additional resonances by including one or more additional Genie oscillators. As it turns out, using more than two doesn't really buy you very much unless you're doing something very specific. But you'll see presets in the Egan matrix that use two genie oscillators. And now let's take a look at how it's actually used in the Egan matrix and what sounds really you can get out of this. I'll start with an empty preset. I'll turn the recirculator down because I don't want that confusing the sound of the genie. Now I'll set a master oscillator. Just do something simple. Set a sine wave at 110 hertz. I'm not going to set any spectral balance, so this will come out a sine wave. I'll output that using my standard Z pressure function. Bring up the scope. There, I get my expected sine tone. Now we're going to create a genie oscillator. I'm going to set this to no shape to begin with because that will easily let us hear the resonant frequencies. I'll set the frequency multiplier to one that will inherit exactly the same phase and frequency of the master. The bandwidth multiplier I don't really care about here because I've set no shape for it to operate on. Now normally you will select a shape because that is what's going to get you the most timbre flexibility out of your Genie Oscillator. Now we want to output the Genie Oscillator on the second oscillator bank, not the master. Let's bring up our scope. I basically duplicate the sine wave that I had before because I set the frequency multiplier to 1, so I'm duplicating my phase and frequency of the master. I've set my spectral balance of the genie to 0, so I'm creating the same sine wave shape. But this will let you easily hear how these frequency multipliers work. Let me cycle through some whole numbers on the frequency multiplier. <laughs> I'm basically cycling through the overtone series because I'm just applying a frequency multiplier on a base fundamental. So let's set spectral balance on the master to something that should create a more sawtooth-like sound. But it doesn't do anything to my genie oscillator because that has its own spectral balance setting. Now, if I set the spectral balance on the genie, I do get my expected timbre change. And it doesn't really matter whether this is a DSF oscillator or an integrated oscillator or even a phase generator because I'm just inheriting the phase and frequency. I'm not inheriting the waveform. So normally you'll just set your master to a standard DSF oscillator. Let's remove my spectral balance. I'll keep the master set to 110 hertz. I'll keep my frequency multiplier on 1. Now I'll set the bandwidth multiplier to 1, normal bandwidth, and I'll set myself a shape, the sharp non-band limited shape. Let's bring up our scope and see if that's going to give us a sine tone 2. It doesn't. It creates something a little bit different. If I bring up the spectral scope, you can see this has a lot of harmonics in it. Almost looks similar to a sawtooth-like output. Well, what's going on here? 
Let's take a look how these resonance decays affect the base Gini waveform to create a different waveform. Here I have the base sine Gini tone and we're going to apply the sharp ramp decay shape on that. What's going to happen is I'm going to multiply the amplitude of my wave times this descending pattern and as I do that I'm going to create a different shape one that you just saw we had on our scope and you can see it's the phase transition between periods of these waveforms it's a rather sharp transition and that's going to translate into a sound with a lot of harmonics in it and each one of the different shapes is going to create a different resulting waveform when that's applied to it because I'm setting my frequency to one and my bandwidth to one here these are all going to be applied over one period of the waveform here I've used that same setting of the genie with bandwidth one and frequency one with s set to zero so the genie set to a sine tone with these three shapes applied the sharp shape you can see is what we just talked about the harmonic content of that is quite complex very sawtooth like in the way of its linear descent as I apply the smooth shape over that sine wave, you can see it does smooth out the phase transition between the periods, and that still has quite a lot of harmonics in it, but the amplitude of those harmonics are reduced as frequency increases. And finally, the Hain shape, which applies a much smoother function, really smooths out the waveform. It creates a wave pattern that looks like it only has a few harmonics in it. And when I take a look at the spectral plot, in fact, that's exactly what's going on. So in general, when you apply the Hain shape, you're going to smooth out your waveforms, reduce harmonic content, the smooth function somewhere in the middle, and the sharp function will create the most harmonic content, the most complex and rich content for you. But this has to be tempered with how you set that frequency offset that in and of itself is going to create a very rich, very often reedy sound. Of course, you don't normally use the Genie on a fixed frequency oscillator as the master. Typically, that master will be controlled by X somehow. Well, now we start getting into a much more different realm. <laughs> Now the genie is in sync with X, and I can apply spectral changes to it. I can change the frequency multiplier. I don't have to use an exact integer multiple on the multiplier. I can put some fractional thing in there. I can change the bandwidth multiplier. And each change will create a different waveform. You just have to experiment with it. There's one waveform for a setting that we have. We can maybe take that bandwidth down. You can create some very complex waveforms. A lot of these sounds can wind up sounding very reedy. You can output with your master oscillator. That can take a little bit of the edge off. Very often presets that use the Genie mix them with the master oscillator. Let's make a little simpler setting. Well, we can try and bring in some other shape. A lot of different options. And again, if you want to have something with a couple resonances, let's bring this down. We can create another genie oscillator. We might set that to a different shape. Let's say one's the Hain, one's smooth, and we'll set Let's set that to a different frequency multiplier, maybe a little bit different bandwidth. This will still take the master as the leftmost oscillator from it. So both of these Genie oscillators are going to have different now resonances, but they're both going to be applied to the same master. I'll output both of them. Obviously, another complex waveform 
I could have, say, one more genie oscillator here. I'll create another master. Maybe I'll set that to X, offset a little bit in frequency. I will take my first genie. I'll put a little bit of different spectral balance on each one of these. And I can create another genie oscillator here. This one now uses the oscillator to the left of it as the master. Do that, and let's say we want Y to affect the bandwidth of this. So I'll change my frequency multiplier here. I will have, let's say, 2, and I'll have Z affect that one. So now I'll have a much more dynamic sound, and I'll output that on the fifth oscillator, so I'm not outputting the masters here at all. And you can hear I have my frequency offset there. And if I wanted to, I could bring in both of the master oscillators I think you get the idea. You can just play around with this now. Normally you wouldn't have this many genie oscillators. This is kind of a special case. Most of the presets use one or two, but of course you're free to invent and let your mind be as creative as you can with this. All right, I've taken our example, and what I've done is instead of just putting the same Z pressure function on the outputs, I've created a separate pressure function for each one. On the masters, I take that down to a max of 0.13, so I put this formula A on the masters. On my two main original oscillators, I bump that up with another formula that goes to a max of 0.36, and on that third genie oscillator that I put in there, I'll just put that one down to a max of 0.15. On that third genie, I took the frequency offset down a bit, so I don't create too much of a frequency mismatch offset. And I've also turned up my recirculator, because we don't want that dry sound when we really are creating a real preset, for the most part. Now, much better. You can hear there's a little bit of aliasing in there. from that sharp Jenny. If you get that happening and you don't like it, change it to something else, maybe smooth. Lots of different stuff you can do with these genie oscillators. It's a wonderful new addition to the ever-expanding arsenal of sound possibilities that can come out of the Egan Matrix. There are a number of presets that use the genie. The genie trumpet is one that you might want to take a look at. There's a lot of genie presets that have been added to the synth category. You can go in there, play around with some. Here's one that uses two Hain set genies with a master. A lot of these nice, reedy, wonderful sounds can be created with this. You can get other more sign-like sounds, as we saw as well, but the genie's really at its best when you want to create these complex, reedy, budsy, nice, rich presets. So there you have it. Go take a look at some examples. There are a couple in the utilities preset category that you can play around with that have a lot of different controls. You can change and see how the sound is changing on each of the parameters. I think you'll all enjoy using this new wonderful addition to the Egan Matrix.